This is the first and only Earth Roamer SX in existence. And this beautiful beast that retails for over $1 million is going to be our home for the next 72 hours. I got the Earth Roamer stuck in the mud. During our time, pretending like we actually own this vehicle, we're gonna give you a full tour and we'll also put it to the test as we explore the insane landscapes of Moab. That was the scariest I've been yet, for sure. Uh... A couple years ago, we practically begged Earth Roamer HQ to give us 24 hours in their LTI so that we could film a tour for our channel. And two years later, that is currently the most viewed video on our channel. So a few months ago when Earth Roamer launched their new SX, guess who was reaching out to who? I'm just kidding, it didn't actually go that way, but we are super honored to be one of the first people to get to film a video with the SX. And we're gonna be doing way more than just giving you a tour. We are truly going on an adventure with um, a few interesting moments in between. What was that? So cool. Good morning from a rainy desert on the outskirts of Moab, Utah. Yesterday we met up with Zach and Dustin at the Earth Roamer HQ and we caravan six hours from Denver all the way here to the middle of nowhere. Last night when we arrived, we used our super bright lights to find our campsite. Then once we settled in, we cooked dinner using the induction stove, watched YouTube using the Starlink internet, and slept like babies in our California king bed. So now that we've had some time to get to know this massive piece of luxurious equipment, let us show you around. Welcome to our home. I'm gonna give you a tour of the inside of the Earth Roamer and then Nate's gonna show you why the outside is so special. But before I give you a tour, let me give you a little context as to why two world travelers are so excited to show you around a truck camper. And that's because during the pandemic, Nate and I lived in a converted Sprinter van for two years. And even though we had our fair share of ups, our life might have peaked. And downs. <gasps> It's leaky. We became fascinated with this lifestyle and wanted to try out as many homes on wheels as possible. And after trying out tons of different vehicles, we learned nothing compares to the Earth Roamer. All right, I'm gonna start with the back of the camper and make my way to the front. This area is probably my favorite upgrade compared to the LTI. It's basically the dining room table, the office, and a second bedroom. Last night, we seated four adults here so comfortably to eat dinner, but if you wanted to, you could easily fit six. And we have 270 degree views with these gigantic windows. If you work for the road like we do, this is the most ideal office space I've ever experienced in a vehicle. We have outlets, we can turn on the fan if we want some fresh air while we're working. We can jam to the surround sound Sono speakers, but most importantly, this Earth Roamer comes equipped with Starlink internet. Whether we're driving down the road at 80 miles per hour or parked in the middle of nowhere like we are right now, we have high speed internet. I could upload a YouTube video from the middle of the desert. This is such a game changer. Oh, my nerdy heart just gets so happy thinking about it. All right, I've showed you the dining room table and the office. Now for the bedroom. This table should lower down, the cushions will scoot in, and then we'll have a California king bed. This thing, is gigantic. So much bigger than the spare beds in the LTI. There's one more feature of this back area that will blow your mind. With one click of a button, a flat screen TV magically appears out of the ceiling. And like I said, there's Starlink internet, so even when you're parked in the middle of the desert, you can stream Netflix, you can watch YouTube, whatever you want. And then to put it back up, you just hit this button again. All right, now I'm going to take one step into the kitchen, my favorite room of any home. Pretty sure I just said that was my favorite room, but now this is my favorite because just look how much space there is and it's just so beautiful. Everything is so shiny and perfect, including the freezer and refrigerator. We didn't have to worry about playing Tetris with all the food that we bought for this weekend because it all just fits in there, no problem. We have a convection oven slash Microwave. Keep in mind, this is all being run off solar. Mind blowing. I can't remember how big the LTI sink was, but I'm pretty sure this is the biggest sink I've ever seen in a vehicle. It's so deep. Here we have the regular tap with one of these thingies that I really like. We have the filtered water tap, and this is instant hot water. Very fancy. Beneath the sink, there's a regular sized trash can, which if you live in a vehicle, you know that this is very exciting. The less you have to take out the trash, the better. There are also these little door lock thingies so they don't fly open while you're driving. Now, the best part, I can't keep saying that. One of my favorite parts 
of Earth Brummer is how they organize their dishes and their coloring. Every single dish has its own custom slot, so none of them are touching each other and nothing bangs around. We got to put this to the ultimate test last night as we drove in. We were driving over boulders, the whole thing was going like this, and back here, it was totally silent. In our van, if we even go over a pedal, pedal. In our van, if we even go over a pebble, it's like, ah, it sounds like everything is breaking, but everything is just tight, not moving. Each spoon, fork, and knife has its own perfect slot. Speaking of the knives, very sharp, very nice. So this part's a bit annoying, but it's pretty crazy. They have fit five or six pans in one drawer in this magic puzzle. Last time in the LTI, I could never get the pans back how they were when I started. So my goal this time is to figure this out. I'll give you $5 if you put that thing back the way it came out. My number one priority in a kitchen is the coffee maker. And in our first Earth Roamer video, I may have complained a tiny bit about their coffee setup. I found one thing in the Earth Roamer that I'm not a huge fan of, and that is this mounted Keurig on the wall. And to Earth Roamer's credit, they listened. And I'd like to think that I am the reason that the new SX comes with the ultimate coffee maker. There's even a little milk frother and it's just pretty. Not only that, but they did a little stalking and figured out my favorite coffee in the whole wide world and ordered it all the way from Panama. Needless to say, they've made up for the instant coffee I had to drink the first time. <laughs> they are so sweet. Now, I was very impressed with the LTI's wine rack last year, but like a lot of other things in the SX, they've taken it up a notch. Now we have a wine fridge, which once again, they've stocked with Colorado wine. We have so much beautiful marble counter space and an induction stove. Usually, if we're in a vehicle that's meant to be off the grid, I would stay far away from induction because it uses so much power. But the Earth Roamer has an insane amount of solar, so you don't even have to worry about it. I had two pans going on here last night. I didn't even think about it. Luxury. Okay, I was gonna save this till the end of the tour, but since we're here, what is behind this door will blow your mind. <gasps> a washer and dryer combo machine. Just look at it. It looks like a spaceship. I'm not positive how much power this uses, so you might have to be strategic about it, but at least you can confirm that you never have to drive your million dollar earth roamer into the parking lot of a laundromat in the middle of your road trip. If you know me, you know I love storage, and let me tell you, we have more than enough in here. Directly across from the kitchen is the closet slash dresser. There are also some outlets in here and a bunch of controls that I don't understand and I'm not gonna touch. And in this drawer, Nate has unpacked his entire suitcase. This is everything he owns in one of these drawers. It's huge. I took up two, so I have my clothes up here and my toiletries and a few miscellaneous things down here. What's in here? Yeah, we didn't even use this one. Oh, the vacuum. Vacuuming is always a pain. The vacuum just died. Storing a vacuum in a vehicle is definitely a pain, but Earth Armor has nailed it. Your vacuum is just this cord. It's so long that you can do the entire car with one plug and all the dirt just gets sucked into the wall. I have no idea where it goes. If you're not doing a proper deep clean and you just have a little bit of sweeping to do, thank you. Right next to the vacuum plug, you just sweep some dirt over to this little hole in the wall and then boom. The wall literally eats the dirt. Behind this door is the bathroom, which has a full length mirror. One of those things that you don't realize you need until you don't have one. The LTI bathroom is a wet bath, meaning that the shower and the toilet and the sink, it's all one big room that all gets wet when you take a shower, which is great for saving space, but not so great when you need to use the bathroom after somebody's taking a shower. The SX bathroom is a major upgrade. So we have the cassette toilet on the left, works like a regular toilet. You can flush your toilet paper and everything. Woo! And I haven't smelt it yet, which is a win. We have this cute little sink in here. And last but not least, check out this shower room. No more wet bath. It's a proper shower with the door. There's a removable shower head and a waterfall shower. There's just so much space. Like it's like a regular bathroom. And there's a fan. No matter how big your camper is, you're always gonna bang your elbow. Okay, moving on. Across from the bathroom and above the entrance, we have our security cameras. There's a camera on all four sides of the earth roamer, so you never have to wonder if anybody's outside creeping on you or if there's an animal. Maybe there's like a weirdo running around outside. You'll know. Then this screen. This pretty much controls 
everything that can be controlled in the whole camper. So I can turn all the lights in here off at the same time with a click of the button and then turn them all back on. You can dim the lights. Oh, oh. Oh, we can even change the color of the lights. Oh, oh. Party! <laughs> Security mode, when you're going to bed, you just hit that and boom, all your doors are locked. You don't have to worry. Not only can you control everything from this, but you can also check all of your levels of everything, your battery levels, your water levels. This is telling me how many volts of solar we're getting. All things that are just really great to know. And we've just never had that luxury. Well, yeah, didn't even have enough power to make coffee. And last but not least, for the interior, we have the main bedroom. It is also a California King and the whole thing sits above the cab. The best part about it is this bed is just here. It never moves. You don't have to do any of that stuff I was doing earlier. There are no boards you have to set down. There are no cushions you have to move. It's just here. To get up there, you can either do it Tarzan style and hold on to this thing and climb <laughs> or I don't know if that's what that's for. There's a ladder. So you just pull this down, whoop, gently, and then pull this out. Oh, there you go. This is where we slept last night. Love this big skylight that we have, so if the stars are out, we can see them straight from bed. This sunroof actually opens, and if there were bugs, we can pull this bug net. All the windows in the earth roamer are actually set up the exact same way. But if you're taking a nap and you want all of the windows closed so it's dark. They all have a blackout curtain that you can pull. We have a second television in the bedroom with a Sonos speaker, even though I'm pretty sure that TV was down, you could still see that from bed. Both sides of the bed are pretty much identical. We each have this huge storage compartment, two outlets, and wireless charging. We each have a window. One of my favorite parts of van life is getting to go to sleep with the windows open and feeling just the fresh air coming through. So there is one more control panel right here. It pretty much does all the same things that the main control screen does. It's just a great feeling knowing I can control everything in this vehicle from bed. That pretty much does it for the tour of the interior. I'm sure that there are a few things we forgot or that we'll discover throughout this trip. And when we do, we'll be sure to show you. Also, I'm going to give you a full tour around the outside, but first we're gonna put this beast to the test out here in the sand dunes. Real quick, I wanted to let you know that we are giving away a free trip to Everest Base Camp. It's completely free to enter. All you have to do is sign up for our travel newsletter the day we drop using the link in the description below. We did this exact trip back in 2016 and it was one of the most rewarding adventures of our entire lives. The winner of this giveaway is going to get a 15 day all expenses paid trip to Everest Base Camp Plus, we are gonna throw in $3,000 to cover your flights to and from Nepal. This truly was a life-changing trip for us. We came away with multiple lifelong friends from this trek, and we are so excited to give this opportunity to one of you. Just use the link in the description below to enter, and even if you don't win, you're still signed up for our awesome travel newsletter, The Daily Drop, which I promise will save you a ton of money on your next trip, so you really can't lose. Link in the description below. Ready to roll, boys. This is what we didn't get to do last time with the Earth Rover. We didn't get to truly put it to the test. And I didn't get to drive, baby. Hope we closed all the drawers back there. I absolutely love pulling into campsites when it's dark and then waking up to this whole new world that I didn't even know existed. We're in the middle of the desert surrounded by these epic rock formations. No. Uh oh, I don't know what that was. This is so epic. We're literally driving a $1 million four wheeler right now. And Zach drives so <laughs> fast. Like, they don't baby these things at all. He's like, oh, you ready? Also, it is insane that you can put a house on the back of a truck and it can sustain all of these bumps and still stay together. There's wine bottles back there, wine glasses. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I'm so glad nothing broke. We should probably just drink the wine to make sure it doesn't fall and break. Okay, here we go. Buckle up, baby. No way is he gonna climb the sand dune. Oh my gosh. I think you should do this, Nate. You got it. No. You got it. Not only is this Kara's first time ever off-roading, but I'm pretty sure she's the first person to ever drive the SX over sand dunes. How are you feeling? So incredibly nervous, like the most nervous I've ever been in my life. Are you ready? Under pressure, $1.1 million. 
<laughs> Here we go. Gas, 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 gas. Oh my gosh. Okay, now I'm turning down the hill. <laughs> this is epic. Yeah, nice work. <laughs> that was so good. I feel alive. Holy cow. Let's do it again. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do a little bit different, but another good fun hill. Oh my gosh, Zach, what are you doing to me? Oh my gosh. Alright, a little bit of momentum up the bump I just went up, and then you can take it slow down the backside. Up, 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 and down. I've never felt so cool in my life. Doing it with granite countertops and hardwood floors, too. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're doing good. You're gaining confidence, so we're getting to do harder stuff. I don't know if I like that. Maybe I should act more nervous. Oh, this is cool. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, shoot. That felt really <laughs> scary. I felt like we were about to tip over. Got it. Go, go, go. Nice. So we're gonna leave the dunes here. We're gonna hit the trail and uh, we're gonna do about 27 miles kind of back country until we find Moab. Okay, now it's my turn to have some fun. Good luck. Although I don't think going over those sand dunes were completely necessary. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I might have missed the turn, hold on. <laughs> I'm starting to think you're doing this on purpose. There are no trails out here. It's just a desert. So there's really no right or wrong way. It's just what's the coolest way to drive the earth roamer. Without right. getting stuck. Yeah, without getting stuck. Do you see that that's a cliff over there? Yes. Mm, this is the sketchiest one yet. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 I'm trying to lean out this way. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, please go on this side. I'm trying to stay away from the cliff edge. Yeah, yeah oh. get away from the cliff. <laughs> that was the scariest I've been yet, for sure. Uh, I did not expect to see cows out here in the middle of the desert. Oh, this is a big one, Nate. Hey. All right, make sure you have your speed. Okay. You're the pro here telling me how to drive. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. We just climbed straight up a mountain. In a house. Here's your coffee, sir. Thank you very much. It's your reward for all your good driving. <laughs> Appreciate it. We've just made a quick pit stop for lunch. We are still in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to whip us up some salads, and after we eat, Nate will give you a tour of the cab before we continue to the top of the mountain. One interesting thing about this table is that it's meant to pivot, so you can slide into this side, which feels very wrong, but so far nothing has fallen off the table. Feels like being back in the van. Uh, if we were in the van, we would be eating in bed right now. Oh, gosh! I just scraped a spine bone off. <laughs> Okay, before we hit the road again, I want to show you around the cab. So the Earth Roamer is built on a Chevy 6500 crew cab. Crew cab meaning it can sit four people, which is super convenient considering that you have two giant beds, so four people could easily travel around in this Earth Roamer together. Also, as you can see behind me, there is a pass-through from the back all the way into the front. Although it's one of those things that you'd only use if it was really necessary because, well, this is how you get into the front seat. <laughs> Okay, so for the most part, this is your standard Chevy truck interior, except there's been a lot of technology added right here in the middle. Let me just go through some of these buttons and gauges. Starting down here on the bottom, we have a screen that allows us to see our tire pressure in all four tires. Beside the tire pressure screen, there's also a gauge for the third auxiliary fuel tank. So there are three fuel tanks on this truck for a total fuel capacity of 100 gallons. We stopped and filled this up last night and it was almost $5 per gallon. There are 100 a gallon. So it would cost roughly about $500 to fill this up and that would give you a thousand mile range. Above those screens, we also have our light controls. So you can turn on the light bar, which is basically like the sun at night. We got a lot of practice using this last night. There are actually six different kinds of lights that you can turn on, but the really cool thing is that all of those lights are actually tied to the high beams here on the steering wheel. So if you're about to pass another car, instead of having to try to turn off all six of your lights really quick, all you do is turn your high beams off and all the lights turn off. Genius design. We also have a radio that we've been communicating back and forth with. And this screen is probably the most exciting because it has the cameras. So we have an always on back camera so you can leave that on while you drive to see what's behind you, but you actually don't even need to do that because you also have a backup camera that stays on in your rear view mirror. So I'm pretty sure we've got some more cameras going on here. 
Oh, I turned the music on. So, since we don't need two back cameras, we also have some other camera options. I can switch it to a front camera. There's also a FLIR camera, which gives you the fun thermal night vision camera. If there was a deer or a crazy person dancing in front of the car, you would be able to see them. And last but not least, there is a rooftop camera. So the Earth Roamer is 12 feet tall, which is taller than most vehicles. And sometimes you might be worried about your clearance on top. So if you're going through a drive through or underneath a bridge or a branch. You can pop on the rooftop camera and see if you're about to hit anything. we started. All right, time to air up the tires. <laughs> Look how thick it's caked under the mud flap. For some reason, we can't see out of that camera. So this is the kit that comes with the Earth Roamer, and we're gonna use this plus the onboard compressor to inflate the tires. Let me show you how easy this is. Fortunately, the compressor cap is a little muddy. So all we do is we just hook the hose. Ah. So all you do is ask Zach to help you Hook up the hose to the compressor. You made that look easy. As you can tell, I don't do this very often. So right now our tires are at 35 PSI. And with the push of a thumb, we are airing back up the tires. The earth roamer is literally creating its own air for its tires. What? <laughs> Almost died. <laughs> oh. Gross. All right, let's go. Look at these views. So good. So we have finally made it to our camp spot for tonight. And I just realized that there was one very important thing that I forgot to show you here in the cab. And that is this airlift suspension. So each tire has its own air suspension and it can all be controlled individually from this remote, which means more parts on a hill like this, which we are right now, you can level the earth roamer by playing around with the air suspension on each of the four tires. I have a very embarrassing confession. When we were first trying to park here, I was trying to find a level spot and I did the impossible. I got the earth roamer stuck in the mud. I probably could have gotten it out by airing down the tires and getting out the max tracks, but since we're traveling with friends, they pulled me out. We're out of the hole! That's my embarrassing moment for the day. Leave yours in the comments below. I made it to a hotel, let's get it. On hour one, I've had it with my friend. What am I supposed to be doing? I'm pretty much Scoop it right into now. the ball. Task number one is For dinner tonight, I am making plant-based breakfast oh, tacos. Oh. I love that you heard me talking about the chapstick. <laughs> <laughs> It is our final 24 hours in the Earth Roamer. We have been guaranteed that this is going to be the best. We are about to drive the most dangerous road of the entire trip. And tonight, we will be staying at what Zach calls the most beautiful campsite in the world. He has done a lot of camping, so my expectations and hopes are through the roof. Through the Roamer. <laughs> Too early for jokes like that. And I promise I am finally going to show you around the outside of the Earth Rover <laughs> at some point today. <laughs> this is dangerous. This road is not coffee friendly, but it is beautiful. All right, we've parted ways with Dustin. He's going to secure our campsite for tonight, hopefully. We've picked up Zach. Uh, which is probably a good thing considering this road that we're about to drive down. It's called Gemini Bridges. A lot of really great sights and uh, some technical driving, so we're really gonna test the SX. And uh, some exposure. A little bit of, yeah, a little <laughs> bit of cliff exposure. We're gonna be close to some edges, but not a problem. So, Kara's driving. Am I gonna be on the side that falls off the cliff or the side that's closest to the mountain? You're gonna be on the side closest to the mountain, so you're okay. Okay, good. Hold on tight, everyone. Okay, I know this hill doesn't look very big because we're in a 12 foot truck, but trust me, it's big and it will be the first of its kind that I've ever driven over. So, oh wow, I didn't know that was gonna happen. Okay, 
Gosh, I'm basically driving up a cliff. Woo! Holy cow. Oh, perfect. Oh, we did it. We did it. Good job. <laughs> what was that? You're good. That was passed through. You can continue. Woo! Need to check your pulse. <laughs> Nice and slow. Slow is fast. I cannot believe y'all are letting me drive. Alright, we're climbing. The highway already looks very far away. <laughs> Up and around this very tight corner. Holy cow. This is the scariest part yet. There's a cliff on one side. There's a big rock on the other side. And it's very narrow. You got it. You got it. Is this a good time to say don't look down? Yeah, I just did accidentally. <laughs> We're so high up already. This is the easiest side to bail out. <laughs> yeah, should I just have my seatbelt off so that if I need to jump? I don't want to celebrate yet, but I think we did it. Don't worry, this was just the beginning of the trail. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So the trail that we're driving is called Gemini Bridges and we are currently standing on top of the bridges. So before we head to camp, we're going on a little recovery mission. There is a forerunner that is trapped in the canyon because it slid off the road and it's now trapped against the canyon wall. And lucky for them, Zach is a recovery expert, so we're gonna see if we can get him out. Right now we're just setting up the winch. The front truck is gonna be hooked up um, so that we can keep tension on the front end and we're trying to get the front end not to slide down into the hole. Back up. I should probably sit down for this. Standing on the bed. Four. Stop. That was exactly what we wanted. <laughs> that was crazy. Wow, what an afternoon. I said we were going to put the earth rover to the test, but I didn't know it was going to be this kind of test. You're clear. Wow, what a spot. Zach did not lead us astray. This actually might be the most beautiful campground in the entire world. It literally feels like we're parked on the rim of the Grand Canyon. Except it's better than being at the Grand Canyon because if you were in a national park, you would never be able to camp at a spot like this. This is incredible. Okay, it is finally time for me to give you a tour of the outside of the Earth Roamer. And honestly, I cannot think of a more spectacular place to do this. We'll start at the front and we'll work our way around. This is the light bar that not only makes the Earth Roamer look epic, but as we learned on our first night as we were trying to find camp in the dark, is actually super functional. Also down here, there is a 16,500 pound winch, which also looks cool and as you saw today, is functional. It can be used to tow a forerunner out of a ditch that's trapped in a canyon. This was probably my biggest complaint on the LTI, the one that we reviewed last time. The tires looked awesome, but they couldn't go faster than 68 miles an hour without overheating. They've since switched to these new Goodyear tires, which are still military grade, but are rated up to 85 miles an hour, which we may or may not have tested. That's all I'm gonna say. These lights that are mounted in front of the rear view mirror give you a wider field of view at night. So instead of just seeing what's right in front of you, you actually have visibility 180 degrees in front of the Earth Roamer. I love the paint or coating or whatever you call this that they put on the Earth Roamer. It's called X-Guard. It's their own blend. So it's kind of like the bed liner in a truck, except they've made it where you can color it and it's UV stable. So if it sits out in the sun, it's not gonna fade or get chalky. So not only does it look cool, but also if you're driving down some tight trails and the trees maybe scratch against the side, 
sorry people at Earth are watching this video, but I'm pretty sure that didn't hurt it. This dirt could definitely be hiding some scratches under here, but we're gonna try to leave before they figure that out. Because I definitely hit a tree the other day. I'm gonna scratch it! So hidden here between the cab and the camper is the onboard air compressor, which last time I pointed out, but I couldn't truly appreciate just how useful this was until this trip. We've aired up and down multiple times before we went into the dunes, when we came out of the dunes. There's a lot of airing up and down when you're off-roading, and this makes it super convenient. And the compressor is super strong, and these tires fill up surprisingly fast. Pretty sure you've seen this at some point in the video, but just in case you haven't, automatic stairs. This is just a power outlet. This is pulling power from the batteries inside the earth roamer, and it's just an outlet, so if you need to charge anything outside, you can do that from here. This keychain is not quite as big as the last one, but I still have to figure out which key opens these. It's not that one. So it looks like this top door is your water fill up, and... outdoor shower. I'm just gonna put it back in here and act like it never happened. Perfect. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is a disaster. This door back here might be the biggest upgrade to the exterior of the SX over the LTI because this door opens up into the pass-through garage. So the LTI didn't have a garage at all. This one has a garage that passes all the way through to the other side, which we are currently using to store our suitcases in, but you could use it to store a lot cooler things. There is even an outlet. So if you needed to throw like an e-bike in here and have that charging, you could do that too. This is definitely a game changer. This is a Pelican case. I know you can't really see the name of the logo right now because we got it super dirty, but this is an outdoor table, which we haven't exactly figured out how to use yet. And in this giant back box, we have a Blackstone grill. So it just easily pulls out. Perfect place to cook some burgers. You've also got plenty of room over here on the side to store all of your grilling supplies. And then over here on the driver's side, you have your Max Tracks, which could come in handy if you're like me and you're a dummy. There's also a spare tire, which hopefully you never have to use. But if you do, there is a jack here underneath the spare tire, which means you'd be able to change it yourself. And last but not least, there's also another 16,500 pound winch here on the back. I have one complaint about the earth roamer so far. It's that the ghost camera on the back and the rear view camera, when you're driving through a lot of mud, they just get completely covered. I've already been out there cleaning both off twice. Can't see out of either one of them. That just means we've been having a lot of fun on some crazy roads though. Hmm, so we meet again. Behind this door is the cassette toilet, which I will just show you instead of pulling out this time because last time, I was told that this toilet is never used, otherwise I would be worried that this liquid leaking onto my arm right now was not water. I used it earlier. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say this time, we've used it a lot more and I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> this is your shore power, so if you're at a campground or if you're at your house and you want to charge your earth roamer, you can plug in right there. This is your diesel fuel tank number one. And this is your diesel fuel tank number two. And last but not least, I need to take you up to the top. Ah, this always feels so wrong, but they say you can do it. Ooh, that cracked a bit. So up here on top of the earth roamer, we have 1600 watts of solar. The solar pretty much takes up the entire roof, but in addition to the solar panels, we have a fan over the bedroom, fan over the bathroom, AC, AC. This is the camera, another fan over the kitchen table, and last but not least, the grand finale of the rooftop. This is the Starlink dish. There is just no way I can explain to you how incredible it is to be in a place this remote and know that I can stay out here and work on my computer for an entire week and be connected thanks to that mobile Starlink dish. The SX is definitely a dramatic upgrade to the LTI. It is the bigger brother in every way. Pretty much like everything that was on the LTI has just been leveled up a notch here on the SX. Before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can enter to win a free trip to Everest Space Camp using the link in the description below. Also, I wanted to let you know that we just published a new video over on the Daily Drop YouTube channel all about how you can use miles and points to stay at all-inclusive resorts for free. So if you're into that, I will also leave a link to that video in the description below. 
Thank you for watching, and we will see you next week with what might be the craziest adventure we've ever been on.